so uh, let me share my screen first so anyway those who do not belong to lis community uh, still they can get something but uh, mostly i will be concentrating on the application of uh, aiml in uh, library and information science so can you see the screen yes, no sir. yeah not yet Yes, yeah. yes, 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 absolutely. Okay. Oh, fine. Uh, uh, so, this is uh, the topic that uh, AIML application in uh, knowledge organization, particularly one particular sector in uh, library domain, is knowledge organization where most of the intellectual activities we need to provide. So, how AIML can uh, shape that particular uh, entity in future, that will be the uh, most important or the core aspect of this talk and uh, data carpentry part uh, will now be integrated with AIML. Present AIML is completely you know uh, data intensive AI. Previously it was knowledge intensive AI, now it is data intensive AI, uh, particularly after the introduction of machine learning technique. Uh, so data carpentry is interwoven and in, almost in each and every step we need data carpentry process. So we'll be starting with uh, this, uh, what are the component of data size that can be applied uh, to bring the fruits of AIML in library uh, services. So with this, uh, you know, uh, first let me tell you uh, that uh, uh, um, artificial intelligence uh, is uh, with us right from 1960s or even more than that, 1953 to be exact. Um, but recently it actually introduced in the public domain. Uh, just like internet, uh, it was there with us from 1969, but people started using uh, internet from 1995 after NSF withdrawn their st support from internet and it, it became a public good. So same similar things happened with AIML. It was there uh, in the research bit in different kind of uh, academic departments, uh, research groups. Uh, many scientists, engineers, academicians were using, uh, you know, but that time it was knowledge based AI. All on a sudden, uh, into after introduction of this chat GPT and different uh, other uh, large language models like BART, Zemini, etc. All of a sudden, it became very popular also in the public domain. But uh, <clears throat> as a library professional, uh, as I said, that AIML is an ocean, and soon it, it will become an integral part of the LIS curricula and LIS services. No doubt of it, because that is the potential of this technology. It's a kind of killer technology, like email affected each of us, like bicycle affected the entire society, right? from the upper strata to the bottom of strata of the society. So those kind of technology which touches upon every strata of the society, we call them killer technology. And AIML has that kind of potential and still it is in infancy. At its mat mature stage, uh, you know, possibilities is, is, are enormous. So uh, in this particular slide, as you can see, uh, what I tried to attempt a, a circular categorization of AIML and where we need to focus as a professional. Because as I said, the landscape is huge, you cannot learn everything. So first uh, important thing, the outer periphery, which belongs to the artificial intelligence is the natural language processing. One of the very important factor that distinguishes the traditional retrieval process and the AI enabled retrieval process is their capability to process natural language. In case of a search engine, you are selecting uh, title is equal to prologue of the author is equal to wrong author, then publication year greater than is equal to 1960 and publication year less than is equal to 1970. It will retrieve all the uh, works written by Ranganathan having the word Polagavana in the title and published during 1960 to 70. It's a kind of artificial language because uh, it requires certain degree of information literacy, such a certain degree of search literacy from intermediary search skill to the advanced level search skill. 
in, in compare with that ai enabled retrieval will be all kind of natural language processing you are asking the way you are asking a question to a friend or to a teacher or to a colleague the same way you are asking so the system needs to have the capability to understand that particular statement or question and then uh, process it and retrieve the set of documents so that's a very important thing in the domain of lis how natural language processing uh, works what are the different kind of analyzer what is staining what is lemmatization this kind of new concepts are coming then another interesting thing where ai ml can take the lead is the knowledge representation when you are uh, cataloging a document indexing a document classifying a document you are basically creating a knowledge representation uh, system uh, on the basis of different kind of domain modeling tool or knowledge modeling tool like ddc udc these are all knowledge modeling tool you are dealing with the generic uh, you know universe of knowledge same is the case with the cataloging indexing when you are assigning subject indexing or a keyword on the basis of a thesaurus all belong to the knowledge processing and knowledge representation and there ai can uh, you know perform marvel then another uh, one that is in the uh, outer cell is the uh, application of ai ml in search and, and retrieval huge possibilities are there the present retrieval mechanism we are using in a library setup like different kind of text retrieval engines you are using at the uh, you know most for example when you are using koha it supports a structured uh, text retrieval engine called zebra when you are using the earlier version of dispatch it is apache lucid when you are using the dispatch 7 it's apache solar when you are using greenstone it is mgpp lucid or solar anyone you can opt for so each of the library most visible library you know systems like automated library system or digital library system or library discovery system presently they are depending on different kind of text retrieval engine in future after the introduction of large language model that is going to be changed like anything retrieval will be integrated large language model will be integrated with this kind of traditional text retrieval engines and it will be much more efficient in future many researches are going on so if we now enter that artificial intelligence and machine learning are uh, almost we use synonymous but my dear friend it's not synonymous artificial intelligence is a broader concept and machine learning is the most important component inside the present generation artificial intelligence after post 1992 uh, rather so uh, machine learning uh, when introduced it became immediately almost overnight the most important component under artificial intelligence as it is doing most of the major heavy lifting job like uh, learning from a huge data set to discover the patterns to predict the or to suggest a class number or to suggest a you know uh, subject keyword or thesaurus entry or answering something so machine learning is most important uh, you know component but these are these two are not synonymous artificial intelligence is a broader concept of which machine learning is a part during in the machine learning the entire machine learning back ends or algorithm can be divided broadly into two groups either it is based on the lexical approach or it is based on the associative approach so lexical approach and associative approach will be coming uh, to uh, you know compare in details but uh, for the moment you just uh, try to understand the lexical approach is having a huge vocabulary and requires minimum training data set on the other hand associative uh, you know model depends on a uh, you know small or medium sized vocabulary like a thesaurus or subject heading list or a classification scheme and requires huge number of you know training data set to learn the pattern and both are useful in different context so in particular machine learning back end people are now emphasizing on ensemble method ensemble is a kind of mixing up you are mixing up uh, regular back end like a lexical back end or few this uh, associative back end uh, and creating a fusion back end or a fused back end uh, 
so that fusion is called ensemble the term ensemble came from the music industry where many of the hands like someone is playing violin someone is playing guitar someone is playing tabla and it is creating a, a orchestra kind of thing so that ensemble mode is the presently the very much in thing in machine learning back end we are mixing judiciously lexical back end and uh, associative back end so within this machine learning ensemble method the most important technology is the neural network technology there are many actually many machine learning uh, techniques but most important present day technology is the machine learning based on neural network model which rather try to imitate the way our brain working so upon this uh, you know uh, particular neural network cell within the machine learning the most important present component which is fortunately an open source you know neural network model is tensor flow developed by google so most of the uh, you know uh, machine learning uh, back end which are based on ensemble are using tensor flow but there are many actually and within the tensor flow within the neural network again there is a concept called deep learning and deep learning is uh, actually a part of neural networking which is based on different kind of transformative model so today you are has, uh, you know here and there you are get, uh, getting the idea chat gpt is based on gpt so that gpt is basically a transformer model uh, that transformer model uh, the like bart or gemini from google uh, the new name of bart is gemini and uh, the famous gpt from open ai so these are actually the main focus nowadays in deep learning so from this slide your takeaway is that that we have to consider mostly as a library professional nlp techniques knowledge representation based machine learning because as i said machine learning and artificial intelligence is huge landscape is huge then uh, retrieval part uh, how retrieval can be affected uh, because of this technology within machine learning most important component is ensemble it's a fusion between different kind of uh, back ends and then neural network within the neural network our target may be tensor flow it's an open source framework and within this uh, neural network another model is coming deep learning or core uh, of the model is dominated presently by deep learning and there are lot of large language models are dominating now uh, as i uh, indicated uh, before that am i still connected okay so as i indicated uh, you before that all on a sudden ai ml became very popular in the um, every human walks um, and there is a little bit of uh, ai and ml uh, in everybody's life we are using ai ml in everyday life um, without knowing sometimes without knowing even i i'll tell you something and you will be amazed that this is also ai yeah we are using without knowing so uh, why do we see uh, the exorbitant growth in ai ml in recent days and here my dear friend uh, the phenomenon is very much like a bamboo bamboo tree phenomenon as you know kosi already told you that i am coming from the countryside so uh, during our childhood days we often observe this particular phenomenon that a bamboo, bamboo tree uh, simply do not grow in the first 5 years you simply do not know that there is a uh, you know sapling of bamboo tree then all on a sudden within 5 6 weeks uh, it uh, started growing similar thing happened in the uh, ai ml also and in fact why ai ml similar thing happens with our brains also uh, the very much uh, you know A similarity between the AI ML and brain is quite amazing. In fact, you see all the technologies presently we are having. These are basically extension of our different human organs or five sense organs. Rather, when you are using a uh, high speed car, that's nothing but extension of your feet. When you are uh, seeing a, a virus uh, through microscope, that extension of your eye. when you are seeing a large uh, you know um, remote star through telescope again extension of eye so almost all technology you can compare with your five sense organ either hand leg eye ear screen everything 
Uh, most of the sensor technology nowadays, uh, most of the ACs are nowadays sensor based. Your uh, this uh, um, escalators are sensor based. So extension of human sense organ like a screen. So, uh, but uh, the AI ML technology is different from this uh, extension of different human organ in one sense that till date no technology attempted to imitate the brain. In fact, uh, uh, you know, modern science even do not know 15% uh, of uh, the brain, how it works, how it stores document, how it stores memories, how it stores even smells. Uh, we simply do not know. But of uh, 10 15 percent what we presently know that we actually try to imitate inside uh, AIML technology so it's a direct imitation of your most powerful device called brain so uh, if we if we try to draw an analogy between the human brain and uh, you know AIML and the same we, we can observe the same bamboo bamboo tree phenomenon actually work so uh, here in this particular uh, you know uh, slide you can see i uh, attempted a brief history of human uh, development particularly different kind of genus and species you all know that uh, we are homo sapiens homo is the genus and sapiens is the species so first homo genus appeared before 2.5 million year and 2.5 million years is not a matter of joke my friend 1 million year is equal to uh, 10 lakhs years so you can easily do your math what does it mean 2.5 million uh, years so first uh, you know appeared is homo habilis then homo erectus and finally we actually evolved into homo sapiens so presently we are running in this generation homo sapiens and recently in a book uh, one of the great uh, thinker of our time harari uh, historian from israel he predicted the next next possible human species will be Homo deus, and the term deus uh, he actually uh, actually etymologically derived from the terms devota in uh, uh, Hindi. So uh, that's a different story. You can read the Homo deus trilogy of uh, Harari, but uh, uh, still, date we are Homo sapiens. And what in the in this picture? Can someone of you tell me that what is the visible change you are observing in this picture? Right from uh, you know Homo uh, this Africanus to Homo sapiens. What is the visible uh, difference you are observing? Anyone, please. Am I connected? Yes, Patanda, yes. Okay, uh, so someone will please uh, tell me that what is the visible, you know, difference you are getting from this first, uh, you know, uh, picture to the last picture that is Homo sapiens. Anyone, please? Is not it the skull size? Hmm? You see, right from Aphrenesis to Homo sapiens, the change in the skull size and why our skull is growing like this in a, in a, in a volume which is almost triple of the size of uh, from Aphrenesis to Homo sapiens because, my dear friend, our brain is growing. If you take from uh, Simpanji to Homo sapiens, Simpanji, uh, uh, you know, having a brain size of around 500, 485 cc, whereas average brain size of Homo sapiens is 2000 cc. So almost three times increase in this journey, uh, which took almost 2.5 million years. And brain is a very costly device. When you are lying on bed, doing nothing, you are on rest, still, 25% of your body energy is uh, you are spending to keep your brain awake. Brain never sleeps. Every when you are in deep, you know, sleep, then also your brain is awakening. <coughs> oh, sorry, and it draws huge amount of energy. 
and highest amount of energy draws from body when you are searching something not physically when you are mentally searching something when you are mentally thinking something that how to structure this chapter how what should be the title of this particular uh, book chapter or your journal article so 80 to 85 percent energy you are drawing drawing when you are searching inter internally by thinking so that is a very very costly device and very interesting fact is that it's a biological uh, paradox that no species gives that kind of, you know, uh, uh, no species allow that kind of uh, device which takes almost 25 to 80% of their energy every time without giving you nothing back. And why I am saying it's giving nothing back to you? Because you see here, uh, I collected this picture from prehistoric age to till date. These are called old one tools 2.5 million years ago human brain uh, being started developing this kind of tool so your brain you have not uh, you know uh, increased your muscle strength we never learned how to run fast we never grown our teeth we never grown our nail to fight back to other animals we were insignificant animal in the animal kingdom and almost dwelling in the bottom of the food chain and we developed this kind of tools. It took almost 1 million year, 2.54 to 1.5. And you see, uh, this is one of the difference between the human species and other animal uh, in the animal kingdom. We are tool makers. We make tools to comfort our life. Nowadays, this computer, your phone, your fan, your AC, all the tools we are building just to make our life more comfortable. So this is right from the beginning. This is one of the difference between the human species and the other, uh, you know, member of the animal kingdom. They, they cannot make tools. We can make tools. We are tool makers. And one million years we spent, this brain gave us something like this, some kind of blunt, you know, tools, which human species use to break the bones. Because they did, did not have the capability to fight back a large animal and kill it. They never learned that during that period of time. So they were waiting. Another animal will kill a big animal. It will eat the uh, flesh and blood. And remaining bones, we go to break through tools, this kind of tools, and eat the bone marrow. That's a very, uh, that was a very uh, nutritious for the human society. So that was the life of uh, human society uh, way back in 2.4 million, uh, million years ago. Then it took another 1 million year almost to, you know, develop the tools which are double-faced and more surfer in compared with the old one tools. So almost 2 million years we took to develop this kind of tool and brain gave us only this facility. We can create tools, nothing else. Rest of the things are almost like other animals. So that's why I'm saying it's a bamboo, bamboo tree phenomenon. We invested on brain, nobody knows why. We never increased our muscle strength, teeth or nail as I said. We all, millions and millions of years we have invested on brain. Normally that is not happened in, uh, you know, biological evolution. People or uh, species gives importance only that particular, uh, you know, organ that can return back something for their living and for their, you know, survival. That never happened with the brain. Uh, in fact, in the first two million years. And still we invested on brain and our energy on brain. Uh, God knows why. Uh, but anyway, fortunately, we invested that, you know. So again, if you go for the uh, this uh, Aquilian period tool to Paleolithic tools, again, you can see the improvement. Again, it took another 1 million years almost to develop this kind of tools. This is, a, you can say, the predecessor of the modern arrow. And modern arrow is a predecessor of the modern missile. So, you know, tools were there that we can develop uh, the technology. But... Again, in the past, um, uh, you know, two million years, this is the re this was the result. Then, as I said, that this bamboo bamboo tree phenomenon, you can know from this uh, brief uh, history of human civilization. We started our journey from Homo habilis, 
2 million, almost 2.5 million year ago. Homo sapiens age, uh, the maturity age came 1 million year ago. Then uh, not um, uh, then tribal age started because we started gathering together to create sect and tribe and that 40,000 year ago. Agricultural age is you know child almost only 7,000 years ago. But this agricultural age actually created a lot of human faculties. The way human being presently represented by different human like faculties like music, uh, like uh, songs, uh, our literature, all kind of finer tools we developed in agricultural age because my dear friend, in the first two million years or more than that, we spent only on hunting and we started developing different tools that can help us in hunting and uh, can kill smaller animals. And we wait always uh, other animal kill will kill the bigger animals and we'll take the bones. So that was the history. Uh, and we never knew how to use fire in uh, food preparation. So uh, raw meat takes almost 18 years to digest. So uh, we uh, hunt, we eat, we sleep. And again, after uh, awaking, we again go for hunting. So brain, we have never given brain enough scope. We were busy with our struggle of existence. The first kind of uh, scope uh, we have given to brain in the agricultural age because we then become the gatherer, food gatherer. We never, uh, we now know that tomorrow I do not uh, go to work because I have foods and uh, in the use of the fire actually reduced our digestive time from 18 hours to three hours. And that's why you can still feel uh, hungry after every three to four hours. The same Paleolithic uh, age uh, syndrome we are carrying in this uh, machine age. So that was the thing that uh, agricultural age given us the scope. We have given brain a chance to you know, uh, grow. And then came different empire age like uh, Egyptian empire, Roman empire, and scientific age, the reason-based era that uh, do not make a story like uh, you know religious books that uh, uh, God created world in three days. Uh, so that kind of story we tried to explain uh, how world uh, developed because without any kind of reasoning. So first uh, uh, scientific age came with the reasoning with the, uh, in the hand of uh, Sir Francis Bacon, uh, W. C. Harris only 400 years ago, 380 years to be exact. And again, you can see the bamboo tree. First two million years we took uh, uh, to develop this kind of tool. Then all in the last 500 years is, a, uh, you know, is, a, is an eruption of ideas. Industrial age started 180 years ago. Then we uh, invented computer as a support tool 70 years ago, 1950-2020. Then came the symbiotic age. We are presently going through the symbiotic age, man-machine symbiosis. I, I'm, I mean, I'm giving you one example, the symbiosis, how it is happening. During this half an hour uh, talk, what we have covered so far, how many times actually you have checked your mobile phone? That's basically we are we are actually building a psychological bonding with the machine. There is a survey that on an average a human being opens up his or her phone 80 times in uh, 12 hours, and most of the cases he or she does not know why he or she is opening the phone. A very interesting thing. And it is one of the phenomenon of this man machine symbiosis. In each, almost each and every step, we are depending on the machine right from the morning. Your machine is bringing you water in the morning. Uh, it is actually uh, pouring water in, over, in the overhead tank. And then onwards, you see your microwave oven, your toaster, your tea maker, everything is a machine. Then you are uh, going again uh, to your workplace again through uh, different kind of machines, your bus, your tram, your train. So it's a man machine symbiosis and you cannot think life without uh, machine even more than 15 minutes. Then symbiotic age will be ended by 2050 
and autonomy age will be started and here most of the cases i got a question we are already in the automation age we have banking automation we have library automation we have industrial automation so why autonomy age again automation age again because my dear friend every automation you presently using the technology requires human intervention in each and every steps you are cataloging a book in koha or any of the library management software can your software uh, automatically uh, understand uh, that what should be the 650 entry that is the subject keywords or 082 ddc number that you have to provide so each and every step there is a human intervention even in banking automation you need to provide otp you need to provide p you need to enter your uh, amount uh, or to whom to you are uh, transferring money you are doing through your mobile phone but each and every step requires intervention from you that's not complete automation so complete automation age will be will be entering uh, in 2050 and in 2060 within next 10 years we will be entering into the age of tech singularity and what is tech singularity tech singularity is so far up to the autonomy age human beings are smarter than the machine whatever is the memory and processing speed we still control the machine we are the programmer we are the modifier of the programmer we are the designer of ui we we control them but machine was not smarter up to this uh, autonomy age but in the tech singularity age machine will be smarter than human being and right from them what happen it's a kind of prediction i and i don't want to predict because most of the uh, research uh, in the frontier of computer science is presently going on this tech singularity when human uh, society will be able to produce a machine smarter than a human and then onwards what will be the history what will be the future what will be the development nobody knows so uh, we are uh, going to reach that particular point maybe many of us won't be uh, here to see that particular transformation but uh, future generation uh, will face that uh, what what does this tech singularity bring uh, to the human society so as i said that bamboo tree phenomenon happened with the brain past 2 million years nothing happened everything was uh, inside the you know soil then all on a sudden within 5 6 weeks because 500 years is nothing more than 5 6 weeks in, in the entire uh, terms of uh, almost 2.5 million year plus so uh, last 500 years you see the development uh, brain actually made and it is quite fortunate that in spite of all the odds we invested our every biological factor in growing the brain not muscle not running capability not nail or tooth so this is one of the interesting thing but uh, lots of you know heavy talking so far we have uh, covered so let us start with a, a little bit of lighter mode so up to 2019 uh, now we are entering in, inside this uh, topic that ai ml and you have an idea that how um, brain actually grown and um, how ai ml is actually imitating our brain power so up to 2019 bc stands for before christ like anna domini ad and bc before christ then in 2021 you all know uh, covid happened and now bc stands for before covid before everything before covid and after covid life was not the same because uh, you know if covid was not there possibly in this particular workshop uh, may be happening in physical mode and again in 2023 after the introduction of this uh, epoch making tool from you know, open ai now bc stands for before chat gpt everything before chat gpt and life after chat gpt is not the same so uh, again it's a, a lighter thing and uh, unfortunately humans are hooked with the machine as i said it's a age of symbiosis man machine symbiosis and machines are learning uh, you know meanwhile and uh, again it's a joke but a sad reality <clears throat> anyway so if i now uh, with this brief introduction of uh, today's talk 
if we now enter inside the uh, uh, AIML, and I already said that uh, uh, AI was with us from 1950 mm -hmm. and uh, till date, but meanwhile, uh, a very important thing happened. The entire model changed. Um, uh, it, it, earlier it was knowledge driven AI and now it is mostly data driven AI and a combination of knowledge driven AI and a data driven AI. So if I want to give you an example that uh, uh, how knowledge driven AI and data driven AI are uh, intermingled with each other, here you see uh, uh, previously, suppose uh, uh, previously in, in the year 1990s, uh, 91, 92, I wanted to develop a, um, uh, an AI ML expert system which can take a title and can predict the class number on the basis of DDC or CC. So before that, I need to uh, create a rule base for the entire DDC or CC. I need to uh, provide that to the machine, that uh, knowledge base. Then uh, knowledge base must be coupled with an inference engine. Inference engine will be coupled with a NLP uh, interface. So in NLP, I will give a title in the natural language. The inference engine will call the, the knowledge base. And it will try to predict the class number on the basis of the rule we have fed. Gone are the days for that kind of AI. So now what uh, we do, uh, suppose as a knowledge model, we now can provide the entire uh, you know, um, knowledge base. We do not have to infer the knowledge base. The entire ontology, entire library of Congress subject heading list, entire DDC, now it is available in linked open data format. That linked open data format we provide or feed in, uh, to the machine. Then we throw the machine lots of data. For example, uh, I'll be showing you in practical demonstration that how we can train a machine to predict Library of Congress subject heading list or DDC. So the model here is that we uh, converted the entire LCSH into a linked open data format. Now it is entire in, uh, LCSH is available for downloading in LOD format. So we actually scosified that. That means we made uh, make it uh, made it uh, SCOS compliant. SCOS is a standard from W3C uh, related to linked open data. SKOS, uh, Simple Knowledge Organization System. So uh, on the basis of that LCSH, you know, it includes almost five lakhs plus, uh, you know, uh, subject entry. So that we fade inside the framework. Then we provide that uh, system uh, huge number of mark records, which are already cataloged by trained library professionals all over the world. And nowadays, you know, mark records are available in abundance. You can download from uh, Library of Congress mark distribution service. In Harvard University opened up entire, you know, uh, catalog data. So Penn State University. So we collected all the mark data and uh, collected in such a way the title of the book, the summary note of the book, uh, map tag 520, we combined. Then we provided what are the subject heading and class number, DDC based class number given by the trained library professional. We already fed inside the system uh, LCSH. Then we gave data that if this is the title, this is the summary, then this is the you know uh, subject heading provided by a pro library professional, a supervised learning. This is called, um, uh, and you please take uh, consider it. So five to six lakhs of data we have given. And machine learning works here. It matches this ontology or uh, linked open data with the data we fed, the training data. It learns uh, that uh, what are the patterns, how uh, to um, you know allocate subject heading on the basis of the content. Then we can create uh, this uh, um, prediction user interface. We can give an unknown title, and it can predict what should be the keyword or the class number on the basis of that uh, knowledge. And uh, we have observed almost 85% you know, correction, correct uh, results are coming. How we can measure? Because say, six lakhs of records we uh, collected, we curated that. One part we kept uh, as a uh, test data set. And that test data set, I never you know, uh, communicated to the machine. 
uh, that is uh, called uh, you know uh, data leakage prevention. Uh, the data uh, which I am going to use for testing purpose, that machine should not know. Otherwise, it will be an exam on the basis of known questions. So unknown questions we need to provide. So that's why it is called testing. So after the training is happened, we tested that with uh, around 5,000 test data, which I never utilized during my training, which includes title and summary note, and plus what uh, a trained library professional given. Then we predicted what machine is giving. Then on the basis of different retrieval metrics, like uh, recall precision, you know, nowadays we do not use recall precision. We use order average retrieval metrics like NDCG, uh, normalized discounted cumulative gain, or F1 at K, a simple harmonic mean between uh, recall and precision. So on the basis of these two retrieval metrics, we found that it is almost achieving 85% you know, corrected results. And that's amazing because subject heading, you know, it's a very uh, hard task for a librarian. Even in here, 50 plus library professionals are here. Uh, if I can give you this, all the same book, because you are in different places, I'm telling you that you please uh, consult this book available in Amazon or in my library, Vishwavarati library website, and use library of subject, subject heading list to predict the subject keyword. You all know how to predict subject keyword, how to uh, allocate subject heading. A library of Congress entirely available. Book is available. Hello. I'm sure. Yes, please. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Please tell me. Uh, sir, uh, the slides are not moving. Uh, related slides are not showing, sir. Mm -hmm. What you can presently see? Sir, no, sir. The last slide is only appearing here. The Janus Homo, that slide is only appearing. Related slides are not appearing, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, let me reconnect, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Thank you. And uh, please report me as early as you can see this kind of phenomenon because nowadays, you know, network is an issue. So you you never seen this uh, uh, this one. So you can see now the screen. Sir, no, sir. sir. We are not able to see the screen, sir. For everybody, it is happening. Yes, sir. Everyone uh, in chat also. So many people mentioned about this. Oh, let me switch, uh, let me switch over the,
प्लीज अलाउ मी टू शेयर द स्क्रीन प्लीज अलाउ मी टू शेयर द स्क्रीन हेलो और यू बेटर मेक मी को होस्ट सो दैट ओके फाइन आई एम नाउ को होस्ट यू आर नाउ इन द को होस्ट सो Yes, uh, I don't know. It's showing co-host, but not allowing to share okay, screen. Ajay, okay. is available in the floor. Ajay, is there from the host side? The so showing to uh, disabled, disabled share. So much is not available. Okay, I I will allow the multiple. Okay, please uh, try part of that. Okay, now it is happening. Uh, multiple uh, uh, sharing options. Yes. Okay. 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 Proceed, please. You can see the slide now. No, sir, it is not appearing. No, not yet sharing. Yes, sir, it is not sharing. <laughs> No, no. No, know. sir. What is happening? It is showing me series of series. Not getting. Sorry, sir. Not getting screen yet. No, no. no. no, no. Shall I stop your sharing, sir? Then you can reset. Okay, okay. Try. Are you ready? Come on, come on. Come on, come on. You may share, sir. Okay, let me try. Mm, what you can see in the screen if i share nothing is appearing it's visible sir now your screen is visible slide yes sir yes slide slide yes yes okay. sir yes okay. it's not available it is okay. visible right. now okay <clears throat> so i was we were actually here that uh, uh, this uh, what this data driven or knowledge driven ai are actually integrating with each other uh, so i already explained you uh, that uh, this uh, and anyone please report me in, in uh, not in chat because when you are uh, explaining something you cannot see chat uh, please feel free to report in case of any future disturbance in the presentation so that we can check it out okay so uh, now you can see this slide data driven knowledge driven yes sir we are it is visible sir and it is moving yes sir it is visible moving sir it is moving yes but yes okay fine right. okay fine so uh, 
as i said that uh, this is presently the model uh, knowledge driven and data driven model how they are integrating we uh, upload the knowledge base in the, like uh, in library science domain you can see the class number uh, uh, classification schedule or entire library of congress subject heading list then we provide the human index data machine learns from this pattern and then it can predict and on the basis of different kind of retrieval uh, metrics like ndcg or f1 at k uh, it has been observed that 85% accuracy machine can achieve and it's not a matter of joke because why it is not a matter of joke because subject indexing is a very hard task as i was saying that if i distribute all of you the same book and tell you to use the same vocabulary control device like library of subject heading only one third of the subject heading will be the common uh, two third of the subject headings you are providing will be different from each other so that has been proved through different kind of surveys because that depends on uh, uh, your experience your uh, uh, depth of the subject you are uh, cataloging or indexing and many other more other factors so uh, in, in in the in that context people say that if accuracy is uh, that means the a uh, term you are uh, you have provided and missing also predicting in the same way if it is matching even 50% then it is considered as a very good result <clears throat> in case of uh, knowledge uh, modeling now uh, <clears throat> if we want to have a, a typical definition of artificial intelligence what it is that is basically the simulation of human intelligence in machine particularly in computer system so here in this slide you can say i have given a very simple definition of artificial intelligence simulation or product producing your human intelligence in a machine particularly in a computer system and what is a machine learning machine learning is mainly involved with the data analysis and pattern discovery so it's a kind of you know model building data analysis prediction and so on so machine learning is the most important important component in the ai ml uh, you know concept and uh, if you if you see that um, what is the relation between an ai enabled software and uh, this machine learning and artificial intelligence is basically machine learning is uh, the core part the most important part it is learning from data it is providing output to the artificial intelligence interface artificial intelligence can be integrated with a domain application like your word processing or your uh, mobile keyboard or a system like chat gpt and many more so this is basically the relationship between ai ml ai and the domain applications and as i said there is a little bit of ai in everybody's life can you see from here that three you know um, pictures are inter intermingled with each other can you see that the first one is your mobile keyboard can you see the slide here three pictures yes sir okay so here you see in the first uh, you know slide that in the mobile keypad i uh, actually uh, type th so it can predict that what may be the next word i am going to type uh, it can be da it can be thanks and so on so here you are giving a few letter and it can uh, predict the word so that is everybody is using and it is a very uh, you know simplistic mode of ai but still ai so ai you are all of us are using in mobile uh, typing or mobile keypad then you see uh, when you are using your gmail many of you have observed this particular uh, phenomenon particular facility based on the large language model google has developed called bart so here i have written uh, first two lines so i have given input in the form of a paragraph and it can predict the next line so the moment i um, type when is so it can predict a good time for you so if i want to take this uh, machine generated sentence i can simply press a tab and it will be added to my email id if i want to ignore it i will continue typing it will disappear so this is also an ai based uh, and the ai model is working as a bot similarly here also 
uh, in what processor software uh, this AI enabled uh, system or the GPT based system can be added where I can uh, type a line and it can predict the next of the words or can complete the sentence. So there is a little bit of AI in everybody's life knowingly or unknowingly. But we are not talking about this kind of AI. As a library professional, so I want to show you that what we can do uh, in case of uh, the intellectual activities because EIML is not a kind of uh, word processor. It's not a kind of image generator. It can do much more important like uh, intellectual uh, processing. What is uh, you know the core uh, job of a librarian? There also we can take the help of EIML uh, to ease our life. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, up to this point, what I have demonstrated before you those you can uh, type as few letter and it can produce a word you can write two three lines it can produce the next line or it can complete the next line but the, those were the generation of gpt2 uh, the gpt3 model here in the picture you can see if you compare gpt2 based model and gpt3 based model it's a dinosaurus in you know size. GPT-2 was based on only 1.5 billion parameters, whereas GPT-3 is based on 175 billion parameters. And uh, GPT-3, apart from generating uh, different kind of text, like here previously it was you are giving a paragraph, it can produce a line in case of GPT-2. In case of GPT-3, you give a line in the form of a question or in the form of a statement, it can generate a paragraph. But apart from text generation, a lot of other things it can do. Five, uh, first one is the code interpreter. Uh, suppose one of the machine, you know, uh, C language code I have prepared, this is giving me error. I can post it to chat GPT and ask that where, um, where, what wrong uh, happened, what went wrong with this particular code. So it can rightly predict what uh, went wrong with the code. If I say that I want to create a HTML table containing these are the table header, this is the data, so it can write an HTML table and many other things it can do. So um, this is one of the difference. Uh, I can go for upload a spreadsheet and ask uh, this kind of tool to analyze the entire uh, table data and so on. But most interesting thing is that it can also uh, ready for creative writing like it can write a poem it can write a short story you give a plot it can complete that particular story so that never happened in gpt2 gpt3 model can do it gpt4 model can also do it in a uh, finer tune so this is the uh, changes over time from gpt2 to gpt3 and uh, uh, we are actually trying to integrate this large language model in our information retrieval system. Uh, like many of you already have used, this is GPT uh, free version. Uh, here, a few questions I have asked and it gave me right uh, answer. But one point I should mention here, as I said, these AIML technologies are still in an uh, infancy stage. So one thing is that it can produce only generic text. Uh, some people are saying that it is it's a disruption technology. Most of the you know science and technology reports and intellectual uh, like journal articles, book chapter will be written by the help of with the help of uh, Chat GPT. It's nothing such you know. It it can produce only generic text. It cannot produce a research oriented text. Suppose you are writing a journal paper by utilizing your data, your own analysis. It, it is not of much help. Uh, take it from me. It can produce only generic text uh, and level is up to um, you know, school standard, not even college standard. So uh, this is the uh, kind of uh, you know um, limitations we are having. but. Uh, one thing is that it is actually improving. Uh, say, in case of GPT-3, they have utilized 175 billion parameter. Presently, they are saying that GPT-5 also ready, and they are they have utilized 600 billion parameters. So definitely, param billion parameters are basically data points. So uh, more the data points, more the machine will learn, more the accurate, and more the pinpointed the response will be. So that's a you know uh, a kind of you know evolution of GPT uh, model, but still this kind of limitations are also there. 
but uh, <coughs> now you see what i recommend you as a library professional if some of the students or faculty member asking you to uh, help them in uh, ai enabled retrieval do not refer them to chat gpt chat gpt as i said it's a very generic one so one of the beautiful application as i said here that information retrieval will change its face two beautiful search engines i can demonstrate before you that is ai and those are ai enabled and taking the help of gpt4 model but in a different way so can you see here the search engine uh, url elicit and here perplexity both you can see yes sir it is fine fine now you see if i go for a live demonstration please tell me whether you can see the uh, screen on uh, browser or not can you see the browser yes sir it is visible sir okay fine so because uh, i will uh, you know ask uh, this kind of question because uh, i don't know what happened with my network maybe another problem may be there so anyway uh, chat uh, one is the perplexity.ai so perplexity.ai you can see i can ask in natural language different kind of research oriented question and there is another one called elicit.ai to com or elicit.org both uh, model the uh, domains are working so let's wait for a bit so meanwhile let me ask a uh, question to this particular um, you know ai enabled tool a, a natural language based research questions what are the or say what will be the future applications of ai ml in libraries so it's a complete research question and this particular tool why it is better than chat gpt it is using gpt4 but the model or training data set it utilized with lot of uh, technical document lot of authenticated technical documents so uh, let me copy this one so that i can use the same thing now the moment i ask this question you see it can give me answer more pertinent than uh, chat gpt what chat gpt can do so it can predict that ai ml application in future will be utilized in library for improved information retrieval personalized or recommender engine data analytics and so on and each and every cases it is not giving you data uh, like chat gpt out of nowhere it is actually giving you references from where this data is coming automation of library function so who said this the moment i click the references so it can show you that this is the source what i am using from the school of information future of ai in libraries so it not always journal article uh, or technical report it is taking the consideration of different university website blog posting and so on similarly if i use this elicit.com oh, i don't know maybe server is down or something like that so now this is elicit if i ask elicit the same question the difference is that elicit trained its model only based on the published journal articles so in case of perplexity we are using journal article book chapter technical posting different important website blog sites but here only 125 journal articles so i can ask the same question what will be the future applications of ai ml in libraries so it is saying you see 125 million academic papers it summarize uh, the uh, top four papers in a beautiful natural language and at the same time it can give you references say Uh, this particular paper or this particular paper so i can go to that particular paper i can read the abstract and if it is open source i can click it will be hyperlinked it is not open source that's why not hyperlinked or i can check the um, uh, complete article in semantic scholar because most of the 
paper it actually draws from semantic scholar another ai enabled search engine developed by paul allen so you can see uh, through doi i can move to this particular paper i can see how many citation it received what are the references it include and what are the related papers uh, to this one so this is also ai based semantic scholar is an ai enabled search engine it uh, two point in uh, ai one is the tldr it can summarize a paper in one informative sentence and it can recommend that who are, which are the related paper against a given paper so this is the given paper and this is the related paper it is showing along with the citations and references so in this way uh, as a library professional for your own purpose if you want to guide to your user uh, do not use chat gpt chat gpt is rather a raw tool and you are not quite sure whether it is hallucinating or not whether the information is right or wrong so many uh, you know similar uh, such things happen that uh, chat gpt answer is completely wrong so uh, here that kind of chances are less because every time you if you are getting confusion in any of this claim you can directly go to that particular uh, source and check it and in case of elicit these are all published paper so these are all peer reviewed published paper so this is the uh, two tools you can try that uh, to know that how uh, uh, this ai enabled is going to help uh, this one uh, the retrieval process and here i am going to show you another interesting tool uh, they have developed the same open ai that you can uh, give an instruction it can read the instruction and on the basis of that instruction it can draw a picture and the tool you all know salvador dali a famous uh, spanish painter uh, so, on the, in loving memory of Salvador Dali, they developed an, uh, this tool and named Dali. And this Dali is a completely, you know, beautiful tool. Uh, say, for example, uh, I want to give Dali a task uh, like this. Uh, that uh, you all know uh, Victoria Memorial, who are present here. Have you seen Victoria Memorial or know the uh, building? Any of you? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. So now you see, I am using Dali. So I, I am a, uh, this uh, you know, uh, tester of OpenAI. So I have access to this particular data set. And in instructing this uh, Dali that draw a picture in front of the Victoria Memorial Kolkata and imagine, imagine it is snowing heavily in the front of the memorial building a yellow city cab is there so i am giving the daily a task of uh, a, a, a situation never uh, you know uh, possible in real life because it in kolkata it never snows and but two things are real one is the in front of the victorial memorial kolkata this is real snowing is not real i am imagining it and yolo city cap that is called uh, kolkata taxi in the rest of the country and that is only available in kolkata city and that's a real thing so let us see what dali can do for me so if i say generate now dali can read the instruction what i have given it can give me a series of picture on the basis of that description and it can be well painting, it can be illustration. You can see those who have seen Victoria Memorial can recognize the building, can recognize the Yolo city cab and so on. And not only that, it can also give you different kind of realistic picture like this uh, panel. Okay. Or this panel. You see, this is one of the gate, Yolo city taxi snows on the on the top of taxi and on the road but it never snows in kolkata so this is the power my dear friend so it can read the instruction it can understand the instruction it can uh, it, it it knows where victoria memorial is what is the image uh, how to collect the image and how to integrate an imaginary situation in front of that building can you believe it Initially, when I actually encountered this kind of you know uh, tool, 
I and rather I was surprised, and uh, I, I think you people are also wondering that uh, this kind of things are also possible. But unfortunately, you can cannot access this um, uh, lab uh, tool from OpenAI. So for you, you can experience the similar uh, tools from this one, say Creon. So Creon, uh, you can note down the uh, uh, URL. You can go to Creon. You can enter through your Gmail ID. Similarly, it also performs the similar kind of activities, but the quality is not as per this OpenAI. Uh, and unfortunately, as a begin to, you know, early tester of this uh, tool, I still have access, but they recently closed the access to, um, to the non-subscriber. So it, it costs hugely. I don't recommend uh, to you know, uh, check uh, uh, this uh, lab OpenAI, but this is the best available tool, so not free, but uh, you know, paid payment basis. But this is a free tool, Creon, that you can also try uh, to check how AI is evolving over the time. So this is one of the uh, you know uh, thing in AI. But if I now come to the uh, code domain of the libraries, what I actually promised you people that I will be uh, demonstrating. Uh, that uh, what AI can do for us, what uh, what are the application areas of AI in future for library services and how AI's curricula should be changed and so on. So this lady uh, is a, a librarian of New York State Library and uh, she predicted a few things in way back in 2019. Uh, before the COVID, immediately before the uh, COVID, uh, and uh, mm, these predictions are coming true. In fact, every day, every day it is coming true, and I am surprised by the visionary, you know, uh, presentation of this uh, uh, Linda Gordon. So Linda Gordon predicted that uh, in case of AI, ML applications of libraries it will be most of the cases interactive voice response, different kind of intelligent chat box, chat bot for um, virtual reference services. That is one thing. Another one is uh, different kind of indexing, uh, that is knowledge representation model, recommender engine for document matching, citation, auto-generation of citations and references, content summarization. You give a particular content, it can summarize in a given set of words, quality of services, improving the quality of services. These are the sum of the factors she predicted. And interestingly, what Linda actually uh, attempted to say to all the fellow uh, library professionals, that when you are doing the most important job of a library professional is basically the knowledge representation or document modeling. You are cataloging, indexing, classifying, your self guide, bay guide, what these uh, library professionals are known for. We are a knowledge organizer. So there are two kinds of knowledge organization techniques we use. One is the derived indexing, another is the assigned indexing. What is a derived indexing? You just uh, imagine that you are cataloging a document. So uh, you are entering the title as available in the book. You are entering author with slightly rendering, surname first, then first name. You are selecting, uh, taking decision who is the principal author. So principal author go, will go to the mark tag 100. Who are the additional authors? They will go to 700 and so on. Then, but most of this kind of uh, data uh, elements are already available inside the book. This is called derived indexing. Whatever available you are entering and machine is actually indexing. So each title keyword can be indexed. Surname and full name of the author can be indexed. Uh, name of the publisher can be indexed if you want and so on. So you are utilizing the available information and indexing it either manually or but mostly automatically through your library automation. In case of digital library, you are entering DC metadata. Same is the case with the Mark 21 based metadata. So you, we are metadata people. We are entering metadata. But metadata is of two kind. One is the derived. What we are getting that we are entering, that requires uh, 
not a kind of intellectual exercise that's a kind of training but when we are dealing with dc dot subject or ddc field in mark 21082 or uh, 650 subject heading uh, headings or subject access uh, terms there we are using assigned indexing so their machine cannot do that your library automation software cannot do that you need to do the class number you need to do the subject heading you need to learn them that's that is the thing you have learned in two years in your library school and that that is you are applying in your day to day library profession there lies all the intellectual exercise there lies the difference between a data entry operator and a librarian you are a librarian not a data entry operator your basic skills is actually tested when you are giving assigned indexing and there linda predicted that assigned indexing has lot of advantages basically we are using a combined indexing system some part is derived some part is assigned in case of assigned indexing the problem is it's a time consuming labor intensive for large collection of document you cannot do more than 20 25 cataloging of a book because you need to classify because you need to index if these two activities are not, not there you can easily enter 200 250 books per day but that is not possible because meantime you need to do lot of inter intellectual exercises can that be automated can a machine take decision that what will be the um, you know access point what will be the class number what will be the subject heading on the basis of your title and summary note you are you are entering your author title and summary note in 520 when you reach to 650 it can predict what should be the subject heading from library of congress or any other thesaurus you are using or vocabulary control device you are using can a machine do that that was the question linda actually raised uh, through this observation a very pertinent question and there lies the uh, you know uh, fruit of aiml in libraries otherwise this tool is available that tool is available you can use that you can use that's an advocacy service that means you are you are giving your users or you are training giving training to your user how to use aiml tools and technology like you are doing that this database available that database available but how we can utilize aiml in our own activities for large scale uh, processing of uh, records uh, accurately efficiently how can we translate automatically how can we um, you know analyze sentiment in book reviews automatically so that it can help in uh, book selection can we utilize aiml there that is the question okay so if we want to answer this question my dear friend so it's not that uh, um, a point there are a lot of other uh, library organization library association also started realize that uh, this is possibly the next revolution re next revolutionary thing going to happen inside libraries one is the uh, first one is produced by silip all of all these reports are available for downloading you can um, download all of this report so this was published in 2018 from silip the impact of ai machine learning and automation and robotics in information profession then another giant oclc came up with a very interesting report uh, in 2019 fully available for downloading responsible ai how library professionals can go for responsible ai a new concept they have given that ai ml giving you lot of technologies but uh, no algorithm is free from error so how uh, we should be uh, avoiding different kind of biasness different kind of derivativity you know um, comment by ai and other things so in, in a, as a whole this is called responsible ai so they uh, promised and predicted that the whole report is available but the best report i have ever read on the aiml applications in libraries is written by a non library professional and produced by library of congress 
So, <clears throat> Library of Congress in 2020, given the task of uh, predicting the future application of AIML in libraries to a professor in English, Dr. Ryan Cordell. Dr. Ryan Cordell is a, a member of the Advisory Board of Library of Congress, an avid reader, and a friend of library, what we call them. So Dr. Ryan Cordell produced a beautiful uh, report. And I request all of you to go through this report available from Library of Congress website, Machine Learning Plus Libraries, a report on the state of the field. Excellent report. Then uh, meanwhile, IFLA came with uh, their SIG. I already uh, talked in IFLA SIG of artificial intelligence. They are very enthusiastic people. and. Uh, trying to gather all the knowledges uh, and they have given a E plus statement on libraries and AI that is also downloadable. This is this was issued in 2020. So it's not that uh, something new is happening. Uh, library association, organization, big libraries are already involved in predicting the future, what is happening and they have all taken EIML quite seriously. Okay. So before uh, starting my technical session, uh, uh, let me know that uh, at this point of time, what you want to do? You want to go for a tree break for uh, 10 minutes or you want me to continue with a set of tools for another 10, 15 minutes and then can go uh, for tea. What the, uh, you know, uh, what's the process here? Kausik, are you there? Yes, sir. We can continue, sir. OK, fine. So now uh, I am asking general audience uh, because let me check the um, uh, this uh, chat box also. If there is any other issues, OK, fine. No issue further. So everybody can see it now. OK, fine. So let us complete the group A. Then I will be um, we will be going for a, a small break for ten minutes, and we'll again assemble it here. So in the, uh, all the tools I have uh, I am going to show before you. I have devil I have actually divided into three groups on the basis of their simplicity and complexity. So first one is the most simple tool that I am uh, I can talk. Uh, talk about something I have already shown you that one is this uh, AI enabled search engine like semantic scholar uh, I already demonstrated uh, the TLDR and uh, recommender then question and answer uh, um, enabled uh, a AI uh, or search engine like elicit perplexity explanation so this explanation is a uh, really interesting tool say if I go to explain my paper explainpaper.com so again it's a free tool you need only the gmail id to log on so it already predicted now you see i can upload a particular document i already uploaded to have a time the report written by dr ryan cordell so uh, this is the dr ryan cordell and so on now, the moment I want to uh, upload a particular report, you just click upload and upload a report. So this is a very helpful AI tool for reading something. Explainpaper.com. Say uh, I am reading something and at one point of time, I do, do not understand what is algorithm. <laughs> Okay, so uh, at one point of time, say I simply do not know what is algorithm, algorithmic filter. Now the moment I select it, so algorithm filter will come here and I can tell this uh, particular tool that explain what is algorithm filtering. So now it can explain uh, this algorithm filtering, uh, what it is with lot of references. Suppose I don't understand what is this hashtag black lives matter. So now I can again click explain and it can tell me uh, the hashtag black lives matter, when it originated, what is the movement, what is actually the code theme. So when you are reading a particular technical paper, there is a lot of technical jargon, a lot of concepts, you are new to that particular domain. This could be a very interesting tool 
to read a technical paper explainpaper.com you select something it will analyze it will give you an uh, ai enabled based answer with lot of related concepts so that is uh, one particular thing and all, i already demonstrated perplexity and elicit that you please try and alongside this uh, explain paper so these are the tools what are browser based you only need to know where to go and how to use it but then a little bit of complex tool that is called literature gathering tool or literature network tools there uh, you all know zotero as a reference management software there suppose i am working on a particular research topic then i am not quite sure as a librarian as an author as a teacher that what important paper i have missed is my literature is uh, you know put uh, completely you know uh, exclusive or inclusive uh, i am quite sure that nothing i nothing important i have not missed no nobody is sure about it no researcher is sure about it so i we can there we can use an ai enabled literature gathering tool the simplest one is insightful and the most comprehensive one is research rabbit so let me show you how research rabbit as an ai enabled tool can help me in gathering relevant literature on a given document say for the purpose of demonstration what i actually did here so i collected a set of uh, you know uh, say name it v v1 say this is my uh, bibliography around uh, 2025 uh, documents i actually collected here on a given topic recently we are working on an icssr concept project uh, the library services for transgender community that lgbtq people whether our uh, knowledge organization tool like classification scheme subject heading list these are uh, tolerant to lgbtqi do we consider in the library that sex is not a binary thing it's a it's a uh, you know spectrum or uh, do our uh, tools are ready for the changing concept in the society related to different kind of sexual identities so that was our uh, research topic sponsored by icssr so we collected a few document there uh, uh, and if i start my zotero say you all know zotero i am not explaining it uh, either linux or windows you can run it so suppose this v1 i want to create a collection in this v1 so um, import so i am importing this v1 from the folder so folder is in desktop presentation then vbu so vishwabharati vbu where it is so you can see this uh, v1.bb is there and uh, okay there are 26 item so initially suppose this v1.bb file i collected relevant literature related to lgbtq plus services uh, problems with the knowledge organization in libraries uh, in the world so many people are uh, working on it uh, like uh, Stan sanford barman then drabelski uh, given the quid theory of cataloging and so on so a lot of good works already happened so here i have collected all the 26 core papers now on the basis of this 26 core paper i want to expand my literature base uh, by using an ai enabled tool and as i said so this kind of ai enabled tool i can utilize Uh, these are called literature gatherer or uh, literature network uh, literature network tools and the most important and most comprehensive is research rabbit let me show you how i can utilize that one so i can go to research rabbit you need only um, this uh, your gmail id for uh, login and completely free please remember all the services and uh, tools i am showing you all are open source or open access so don't worry about that except that uh, open ai uh, this uh, 
Dolly. Dolly is it was earlier open access. Now they have closed it. But I am getting still access because, as I said, I was an early tester. So I am creating a collection, say VBU. So this is the uh, URL. Uh, this is the URL uh, researchrabbitapp.com. Or you search research rabbit, it will come. So here you see, I don't have a single paper. So 25, 26 paper I have collected. And now you see how AIML can help me in expanding my literature base. I can click BIP text and select uh, the select. OK, so what I will do. So from this collection, I can export this collection. And let me save as a desktop presentation VBU. Let uh, select as a VBU1, VBU1, version 1, dot B. Now, uh, this I am going to utilize. So BIP text, VBU1 dot BIP. And uploaded all the uh, 26 paper. In some cases, it can say that this paper has no valid uh, DOI or still you want to add this paper. So you click, I want to add all these papers. Do not matter for me. Now, it, at one point of time, it will set that all set for you. So what it does actually, it collected in VBU that one particular document it rejected because it has uh, no uh, entity for that document in the database. And now you see on the basis of this input, it can give me a beautiful explored paper facility. The similar work, earlier work, because I, my reference has a time span from 81 to 2021. So what available before that, what available after that, latter work. These 25 papers written by 31 authors. So it can suggest me another 265 authors who are working or produce paper in this domain. Their entire paper may not be on this LGBTQ plus library services. They have written in different aspects, but some of the papers they have written on LGBTQ uh, library services also. So first, let us go for the similar uh, network. In the similar network, you see I can click abstract here to check the abstract of the uh, document. Now, can, uh, okay, let me explain, you know, increase the size. Can someone uh, tell me that what are the, uh, the, what you can see in this network? Mm, uh, what are the three colors? Can you see three different colors in this network? Anyone, please? What are the three different colors you are seeing here? Because it's important to read the network. That's why I'm asking whether you can see the different colors. Can someone tell me? There are several colors like uh, green, light green, sky, blue, and also fine. So, here you see, until and unless you know how to read this network, you cannot do anything. This deep green color means that I am I have already this document in my uh, you know uh, list. That means this is the 25 uh, records. Then you see some of the nodes are uh, light green, some are the dense, uh, denser in, uh, you know, um, color. That means, um, you know, dense uh, blue. So the rule of the game is that the green nodes are already added inside your network. You have added it. And you can understand that your green papers, included papers from three different zones in the network, zone one, not connected to anything. Zone uh, 2, heavily connected to others, to each other and other uh, papers. All of these papers represent a single paper, each of this note with their first author. And 
blue i missed important paper closely related to my uh, network but i missed and again in case of uh, this uh, missed paper represented in uh, different shades of blue the bigger of the knot uh, more, more impactful is the paper and the denser is the color more impactful is the paper if two bubbles are in the of the same size but one is denser another is uh, light then denser bubble is more impactful more connected to your network now suppose this is a very big bubble what i missed that means very important paper i missed so i can select it i can check uh, the title or abstract if available and if i am sure that it is important paper i can add to my collection so one paper added then suppose this paper abstract i can read full text i can read add paper so in this way very quickly i can gather a lot of related document what i badly missed in my network and 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 ai enable based recommender engine is working at the uh, at the back end which can identify what are the more related paper more connected paper inside your network that you have missed and giving you a chance to add it a very handy tool for a researcher that you can learn first for yourself and then can teach to your faculty and student an ai enabled recommender uh, system which makes your life very easy as a researcher so in this way i can add a lot of documents this network i missed i can add this i missed i can add and suppose you don't have to worry about that whether you have added it before or not suppose if i added something and again i click it so it will now tell me remove from so uh, i don't worry at all if you are not going to add anything uh, twice so now you see um, after this uh, i can always uh, close any network come back to the original situation now my collection paper is from 24 uh, 25 to 34 similar network is now different earlier work and everything is now different so now suppose this uh, 34 papers written by 46 number of authors so i can see what the 46 number of authors and here also bigger is the bubble more impactful or more connected is the author so as a researcher of the domain i know melissa adler so melissa adler all the papers so all the published paper available in the network 31 and here it shows me that what are the melissa paper see maybe the first author or maybe the co author i have added and what are the adler paper as a first author i means so i can select it and add to my collection so very easily i can you know populate my uh, literature base and uh, almost sure that nothing important i am missing and every time you are adding a paper your similar network is changing again so now you see more and more you are exercising this more and more your network will be close very close it's actually closer than the uh, first time what we used but remember uh, the success depends on the first 20 25 papers you are selecting that must you read that must you know these are relevant paper these are not unrelated paper then it can create a magic for you but first 20 25 paper is very important so uh, i came up with only 24 papers and you see i can go back from research rabbit with uh, you know a lot of uh, you know related papers so in this way you can explore similar network related author and everything and when you are done uh, what to do now i am having 43 number of papers this 43 number of paper i can export in bib text uh, let me give you the name as tbu um, say bbu2.bib bbu1 already having all the uh, in bbu2 i am having all the documents we are already having in bbu1 so i can delete this safely by the way you can see my screen now 
what i am doing from research rabbit to zoom to the open zoom yes sir yes sir is visible fine so now you see uh, uh, i can again export uh, rather this time i am going to import vbu2 and all the 43 number of documents will be coming so that uh, tool an ai enabled literature network tool uh, you already understand as a librarian what is the importance of these two and again i can add another few tools here uh, make it 50 i can again go to research rabbit and again i can come back with 100 number of documents very quickly so it's an excellent tool uh, in the hand of a librarian you can master it an ai enabled tool completely open access uh, software as a service what you need to know only how to use a reference management software you can use mendeley you can use zotero but zotero is completely open source uh, very powerful and um, it can be integrated seamlessly with this kind of tool research rabbit insightful literature map or iris.ai so one tool i have uh, demonstrated other you can explore so this is one of the real life application of ai ml application uh, ai ml feature so slowly we are now moving towards the complex world in this particular uh, you know uh, group or group b uh, i can show you a different kind of advanced level uh, you know application with text data librarians are basically text people you see uh, in throughout our life we deal with text Uh, what what metadata you are entering that is also takes the object we are handling the source that is also textual document so uh, we are text people and we need to understand different text analytics uh, say for example sentiment analysis you are you are having a, a, a data set of um, book reviews so uh, either you can go through manually 2000 3000 book reviews and select what are the positive reviews what are the negative reviews or you, you can utilize a um, back end machine learning model that can do job on for you for that uh, we do not have to install machine learning that's why i said group b simple installation or uh, you know uh, very easy way you can learn in the group a you don't have to install anything except zotero zotero is a reference management software you are already having it but in group b you can go for different kind of simple integration and here i can show you that how i can go for automatic sentiment analysis how can i go for automatic machine translation or data reconciliation means how many of my uh, subject headings are matching with library of congress main data extraction i can throw a uh, text and it can and uh, tell me uh, the uh, different kind of important topical keywords so all of this we can do with the help of an open source software called open define and open define is a very easy to install software that you can install in um, both uh, you know uh, linux and oh, sorry both windows and uh, linux don't uh, think that i am using here uh, you know uh, this uh, linux machine that means it is uh, linux only so most of the tools i have selected which can run both on windows and linux you can uh, download this windows including java so you don't have to install java separately just double click it will be installed uh, that's simple but it's a very very powerful um, you know data carpentry tool that's why i'm saying the data carpentry and machine learning are integrated nowadays so have a cup of tea then i am going to show you again in live that how can we uh, you know go for uh, two things one is the sentiment analysis another is the machine learning then uh, remaining part will be concentrating on the auto generation of ddc number auto generation of library of congress uh, subject heading so uh, is it okay with you uh, if we take now 10 minutes break yes sir yes sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. so we will be uh, now meeting again at uh, 4:30 sure sir sure sir sure, sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir.
ओके एवरीबॉडी जॉइंट यस सर ओके फाइन so in this particular session we are going to see lot of things in hands on so first we are starting that how we can utilize uh, a machine learning backend uh, without installing it uh, through a software called open define and open define i already told you everybody can download install open access previously it was called google define now people call it open define and it supports a thing called rest api based data interaction so most of the machine learning backends or services are rest api enabled we can study a particular software or there lot of manuals are there how to frame the rest api syntax and then we can apply here so please report me whether you can see my screen or not let me increase slide slightly can you see in the command prompt yeah. yes sir yeah. yes sir yes sir okay fine so here uh, in case of uh, windows you install open define double click it will open in a browser in case of linux i am i need to go to uh, the folder and i need to start my open define so the back end open define server will be starting and it will be opening in a uh, network interface your yeah, browser interface like this can you see the open define now because i'm asking this question rapidly i you know the confidence is slightly yes. less yes sir so what we are this Oh, what we are going to see first that is that uh, suppose i have collected a database of uh, sentiment so this is a simple uh, you know csv file you can see here the book uh, that review date review title that is title of the book and uh, review text what actually written about the and uh, this all these are uh, listed uh, in my uh, selection list so you are uh, all library professionals here you know that before selecting a book uh, through library committee meeting budget is not always there to in to go for acquisition of each and every book so we need to create a base uh, that uh, Uh, what should be there in the framing of criteria? You required us to uh, download reviews either from Amazon or from Goodreads. dot com. Most of the reviews are available free of cost. So I collected uh, these uh, reviews of a few books, around two thousand, and uh, finally uh, saved as a TSB file. So I am now going to open a project uh, here by using that book, uh, say sentiment. presentation vbu presentation 2024 vbu and this is my data set sentiment data set so the moment you open click next you need a csv or tsv file to create a project in open define so i'm creating the project say so maybe this csv may be deleted sentiment data set so here you see in the moment i see there are 1973 number of uh, book reviews uh, uh, then uh, this is the review text what actually review are written and i i already said that i have collected from different kind of public data set like goodreads.com or amazon reviews you can have it and there are many other new york uh, best time uh, new york uh, times best seller list and so on so first if you need to have a review then i need to check that how many of these books are having positive review how many of these books are negative review now uh, this is called technically sentiment analysis or opinion mining so uh, sentiment analysis is much a popular term it is actually trying to understand or identify the inherent sentiment in the review and whether it's positive or negative the logic is quite uh, simple 
the logic is that uh, a machine learning backend is trained with a lot of positive words, like this book is a good one. This is one of the best uh, thriller I have read. So these are the uh, positive or superlative uh, words. And what are the negative words? Then um, some are the neutral words also that uh, people is not saying good or bad. They just uh, actually uh, passively uh, reviewed it. So that may also happen. So a lot of this kind of word uh, or the lexical approach people take it to train that particular one. And you do not have to install anything here. So what I am utilizing here, a very interesting uh, tool called dandelion.eu. In the browser, you can see the dandelion.eu. So dandelion.eu is a uh, text analytics service available free of cost. Mm. And the subject to the condition that you have to um, register yourself. Say, for example, I am already a registered member and uh, I have uh, my API token. The moment you register, you will have a token of this kind that you can utilize in your API call. And if you want to learn about the Dendelian API, how it works, so it can say you that. Uh, text similarity API, language detection API. Language detection means you are uh, throwing a particular uh, text and it can predict the language automatically. Sentiment analysis it can do. Uh, and um, text similarity it can uh, you know uh, determine the two uh, different columns. What are the similarity between these uh, columns that it can do. So what presently I'm going to show you that sentiment analysis on the basis of the review. So these are the different kind of API example is there, how to form this uh, you know, format, uh, where you need to add your token and so on. So you already know uh, I have preview text. Uh, then let me select, uh, let me select um, 1973 will take a lot of time. So what I am going to do, let me do a little bit of, in your case, you can go for all uh, 1973 or 500, 5000, 6000, whatever you collected. But as time is limited here, what I'm trying to do, I want to take the first 100. So how to do that? So I can uh, add a column based on this column. Add a column based on this column. I'm giving it three document and an ID. A row dot index plus one. So it will create a simple ID, one for the first, two for the second, and so on. It is not required. Uh, the, my purpose is to select the first uh, 100, uh, first 200, so that I can show you. So let me select. Uh, uh, I'm selecting uh, from the middle 100 document and value greater than is equal to say 500 value less than is equal to 600 so uh, i am selecting uh, document from uh, 100 document from 500 to 600 so it gives me that uh, two for 101 as I've selected. Uh, it's ideally it should be 501, say 501. So now it will be 100. So 501 to 600 I am selecting. So this 100 I am selecting out of this 1973 because as you can know that time is short, 2000 may take time. So I'm uh, focusing on that. Top to uh, top 100 selecting from the middle. So this review text I will throw and machine will tell me whether it's the previous positive one or a negative one. Okay. So uh, what I am trying to do, I am utilizing this Dandelion machine learning backend without installing it. I can generate by starting the network, I can generate add a column by fetching URLs then I can create a um, syntax like this. Okay. Now you see, after reading this uh, manual, 
I came to know that this is the REST API syntax they are actually referring to. So on the basis of that, I created one API syntax. So for each of these document, this part will be uh, constant, text is equal to, then text it will take from uh, this text, whatever the text, text I need to give in URL encoded format, space will be replaced by plus. So value.escape URL, then I need to give my token, the token you obtain uh, after your registration. Say, give me a column name, senti data, and let's see what happens. So now you see, I do not have installed anything here. At the back end, Dandelion is there, and there are a lot of other services. Dandelion I am selecting here as an instance. So I created a REST API syntax. So it's basically an interweaving between the data carpentry and machine learning. So I'm utilizing a machine learning backend. I'm utilizing REST API based syntax and fetching JSON data automatically. So all the 100 data I thrown, it read all these 100 records one by one, determine the sentence, inherent sentiment of this particular uh, text and can tell me whether it's a negative uh, statement or a positive statement or a neutral statement. So let's check. So within, within a minute, it can give me the data from Dandelion. And here you can see it says that uh, sentiment type is positive, score is this one, score ranges from zero to one always, language is equal to EN. Now I want to um, determine this, I, my target is that what is the type, positive, negative or neutral. So now what I will go, this is called JSON data set, JavaScript object notation. Now I can add a column based on this column. Let uh, senti type and can go for value dot parse JSON as I am, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, parsing the JSON data. Value dot parse JSON. Then within the JSON, one particular level is sentiment. Within the sentiment, this is type. So then I want to display only sentiment. So only sentiment will come Sent within the sentiment. This is the values. Then I want to display only type sentiment dot type. So now you see uh, the moment I add this one, if I check in the preview button, it's working nice. Then click OK. Now in this case, you see how many are negative, how many are positive. I can go for facet text facet. So it can tell me negative is 73, neutral is 4, and positive is 20. So if I click negative, all 73 negative sentiment or negative review will be coming. If I click positive, so here all the positive reviews will be coming. And if I say neutral, so machine is not quite sure uh, by re uh, reading this one uh, that whether this is a positive review or negative review. So it actually plays in. Uh, neutral location and depending on the score you can see it cannot determine the score so in case of positive score will be uh, this kind of 0 0.53 in case of negative uh, the score will be in minus minus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4 and so on so you see here how easily uh, this is only 100 i can throw 1 million records and within two, three hours, everything will be parsed by the machine and we can uh, give me um, the result in returning. So what I tool I am using? Open Define, uh, a free open source tool. What service I am using? Dandelion. And what is the connection between the Dandelion and uh, Open Define? I am using a REST API based data fetching technique. And if you read the manual of uh, different services, they already clearly said, uh, in most of the cases that uh, what should be uh, the example or the way to create a REST API based syntax or REST API based call. And Dandelion is completely free. You just need to register yourself. You need to obtain the token and that token you can utilize by uh, following their, you know, what to say, following their manual. So that is one thing. 
so now uh, what i am going to show you the automatic translation so before that uh, i already know uh, people are here whose native language or mother tongue is bengali or hindi ajo is there with uh, he knows hindi or devnagari uh, how many of you are belonging to the other language group Uh, like um, any dravidian language tamil telugu kannada malayalam anyone knows anyone here present knows other than bengali and hindi because bengali people are there they can uh, tell me whether right or not hindi uh, people are there anyone knows any dravidian language Yes or no? No sir. No sir. No sir. Uh, but I see a lot of people from south. Oh, uh, doctor. No one from south. Okay. Anyway, so uh, we will be concentrating on uh, Hindi and Bengali. So. Uh, hindi i think ajay is there uh, amitabh is there so you please uh, tell me whether it is doing it rightly or wrongly okay uh, are you here yes sir yes okay please uh, tell me and confirm me so what i am going to show before um, you that how i can utilize again a back end machine learning uh, sorry, machine translation service which is ai enabled nowadays machine translations all are ai enabled they use lot of you know uh, language model for detecting language and transferring one language to another language <clears throat> so that kind of you know technology is same uh, and we are i am going to utilize a free uh, not completely free but quite uh, you know um, free in the sense that uh, our requirement will be Uh, you know satisfied because they provide around 50000 character translation per 24 hour and 50000 character is a huge one so what i am going to show before you that as i said that we are working on uh, this um, lgbtqi based library services so we are also building a thesaurus uh, of different kind of lgbtqi terminology so that's a, that's a big thesaurus we are uh, presently working on but i have selected around uh, 39 or 40 terms uh, to demonstrate before you how nowadays machine learning uh, is maturing every day almost so i created one translation metadata uh, translation data set again a csv file so here you can see this is the url or uri of the term this is the term identifier this is the preference level and this is the description so what i am going to show before you that how i can transfer to translate this description in both hindi and bengali okay again through open define by taking the help of a back end machine learning service so again let me open uh, uh, open define and create a project so this time i am creating a translation project machine learning based translation so this is pbu and this is my translation data set so as i said that i have created a, a data set uh, a, a fraction of our uh, vocabulary device which includes around 39 terms so so again this 39 rows each row means one particular term so this is the prep level this is the description of the prep level so a few term covering almost a to z everything uh, two or three uh, term from each alphabet i have collected from you and i will i will tra tra transfer through this particular description and it will translate me that particular description in english uh, into bengali and second time from english to hindi let me show you what i am doing so machine translation back end i am using a cloud based service uh, aws based cloud service again as i said 50000 character per 24 hours is free what you need to understand how it works and how to form your rest api based uh, sequence 
so again uh, what i am doing add column by fetching url and this time i am utilizing that cloud based system here you can see this is the uh, rest api url and this is the text i am throwing again it will be url encoded that means uh, place will be replaced by plus sign the language pair i am throwing english and transferring into bengali first then uh, my email id and so on um, i am a registered member there you need to register yourself so again let me say description bn bengali and this en and bn is coming from the iso code iso code for english language is en iso code for bengali language is bn so let me throw so now it is uh, actually throwing data to that particular uh, service and you see how speedily it is translating so um, i am throwing only 40 terms it can be 400 it can be 4000 if you are a paid customer limit uh, unlimited but free tire is just uh, enough for us 50000 character is huge per day Okay, now you see uh, that it gave me JASTA in this uh, some kind of uh, uh, garbage format and uh, I'll be coming here later how to transform this data. Now let me do the same thing for Hindi. So again, I'm going for add column by fetching URL. Now description TSC HI. HI is basically the code for Hindi language and this time i am changing from bn to hi hi is the iso code for hindi language so this time it will take the english language and transform it into hi this percent 7c is basically uh, uh, m percent side the url code for the m percent side so now again let me throw it so this time it is actually taking each of the uh, rows and converting uh, or translating automatically uh, from their data set. As I said, that's a, again a language model, large language model based on different kind of translation they have collected. And you can see this chat GPT and other generative GPT based tools are very bad in translation. They simply do not know Bengali, Hindi because they are not trained with that kind of language. And this AWS based system is trained with different kind of English, Indian languages, 12 languages present it supports, and it can do that. So it again gave me that thing. So what, uh, you know, retrieve data from here, you see, again, it's a JSON format, actually. So what I'll do, I'll transform this column. And again, it's a JSON data. So value dot parse JSON. Now you see it will be converted into this garbage will be converted into a language. Then within the language, it is response data. Under the response data, it is translated text. So dot response data. Then under this, the array is translated text. Now, if I click OK, so this entire column will be converted into Bengali. The same way I can do it with the Hindi, edit column transform, and from history I can take it without typing, and this time you see in Hindi. Now, let us uh, take any the example, and please have from Bengali and uh, uh, Hindi tell me uh, the top. Say uh, I am talking about cisgender people. Now there are two kind of gender available: cisgender and transgender. Transgender means uh, people who change their sexual identity, uh, which is not assigned at birth. And cisgender people are people who are carrying out the gender which assigned at, at birth. So now cisgender people individual whose gender identity matches the gender or sex they were assigned at birth. Now, also you tell me whether the Hindi translation is up to the mark? Yeah. 
Or someone can someone can check Bengali also. So, so this ah, is so the that market is a right, sir. The right, sir. Okay. okay. So you see the power now that you are throwing. A, 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 it can be a small paragraph, or it can be a, um, a complete long paragraph, and it can translate automatically by using different kind of machine learning tools. An interesting fact is that I do not have to pay to utilize this kind of services. And you can see the translation quality is really, really good. You, you can read many other things. And uh, <clears throat> for example, you see the feminism. A lot of people knows this. So, Soman Rajnoitik, Orthonoitik, and Savaji Kodigar, Evan Mohila de Jone, Soman Suyoga, Songa, Protist, Evan Lokha, Lokha, Lokhe, Andolone, Songro. So, little bit of you know, uh, change you, uh, you can stop here with Andolon, but it is basically trying to uh, create a literal uh, translation for this. So, this kind of little bit of you know, uh, change is required, fine tuning is required. Otherwise, um, it's doing an excellent job. You see a large, you know, um, uh, database. You can translate almost automatically. And library and proficient translation is a very much needed thing for indexing and various purposes. Uh, uh, in future, maybe machine learning will be completely, uh, you know, Indian language compatible. Presently, uh, the GPT model is not compatible with Indian languages. That's why we are using some other model here. But uh, we are getting, uh, you know. Uh, in if someone from south they can check i can uh, go for all 12 uh, you know popular indian languages on the basis of the uh, speakers of the uh, number of speakers of that language like uh, all the dravidian language then bhojpuri and uh, urdu all it can do 12 languages so this is an interesting uh, phenomenon now, what uh, rest I am going to uh, show you, now we are going to make a deep dive, uh, that is the uh, group C. Group C requires local installation and local training, because now I am going, I am not going to use anything uh, from outside. Uh, tools are not there, data sets are not there. So what I am going to do is basically uh, using DDC and Library of Congress as a subject heading list. Uh, then uh, on the basis of that, I can utilize a lot of downloaded curated data to train my model. Then I can test my model and I can uh, check whether it is uh, answering me rightly or not. And you can also go for different kind of large scale implementation one by one. I will show you. So what uh, we are going to uh, demo install. This is uh, Anif we are going to install. Anif is a uh, uh, open source python based uh, you know uh, machine learning framework created by a library national library of finland so they are utilizing anif like anything they made it open source you can download subject to the condition you know little bit of python uh, programming is not that important but little bit of python is always helpful then uh, you need to select what is the machine learning backend you can utilize. I already told you that there are two kinds, lexical and associative. And then you can mix up lexical and associative according to your need through Ensemble. And in Ensemble, neural network is the best model. So you can utilize a lot of you know, uh, knowledge domain uh, tools like LCSH, Eric Thesaurus we have utilized, Homosaurus we have utilized. Uh, many we have de developed uh, a, a automated system for biomedical literature by using medical subject heading. Then another tool we have used Agrohook for agricultural resources. So we have uh, you know explored a lot, and here you can see um, that um, this is the process we have followed, and this is a generic uh, process you can follow. Just you replace your um, vocabulary. Uh, and in place of LCSH. So first, first you need to choose a subject vocabulary and knowledge modeling. It can be LCSH, it can be DDC, it can be ERIC, it can be Agrovoc, MACE, and so on. 
scosify it scosify there is a tool uh, openly available uh, again from national library of finland it checks uh, the entire vocabulary whether it is scos in uh, compatible or not if not it converts uh, the system automatically into scos compliant mode so after your system or lod is uh, linked open data set is scos compliant you upload that one inside the system then you download mark records or your training data from different places we collected and curated 6 lakhs of records and by using again open define then we curated by using open define as i said title of the books summary of the book then what the subject heading uh, keyword allocated by the library and ddc number then we selected uh, different kind of analyzer because as i said all ai ml is basically and the first core part is the nlp natural language processing it need to understand the language so there are a lot of tool anip supports pre built uh, it is actually you don't have to install separately like snowball as an analyzer spacey as an analyzer so we are utilizing spacey uh, spacey is the most advanced then when your training is completed you can access the system uh, from command prompt from web user interface or through rest api based Uh, system for mass production so all three i am going to show you then uh, as i said that uh, uh, in entire machine learning back end what actually available inside anif like any other machine learning language and anif is a loose framework of uh, different machine learning components mainly open source machine learning components so it supports either regular back end or fusion back end regular back end can again be of two type lexical and associative in lexical we have mlm developed by university of waikato the same professor uh, yan uten who developed greenstone uh, maui like uh, lexical matching it's a lexical model then sw uh, stw fsa that is another uh, lexical algorithm and yet in case of associative model we attempted with tfitf TFID is the most basic model. Uh, you all know term frequency versus inverse document frequency. Fast text uh, um, associative backend developed by Facebook Research. They call them Fair Group, Facebook AI Research, uh, who came up with Lambda. So Lambda is using fast text. It is inbuilt inside Anif. Omikuji is developed by an Indian. Omikuji Bonsai and Omikuji Parabal. Uh, Doctor Prabhu Singh. Uh, he is uh, a researcher in uh, japanese university and omikuji is a very promising associative uh, backend which is already in built inside anif and sbc sbc is a um, no, uh, very old kind of uh, model nobody is using but anip includes it and in case of fusion backend we can combine any of this lexical backend any of this associative backend Mm. inside the system it can be simple ensemble means we are simply joining two models uh, to get the uh, good of the both world it can be pair based ensemble that means i can retrain the model after integration or after creating the fusion backend and the most advanced is neural network based ensemble i can uh, mix up the model lexical and associative and then i can retrain the model by using neural network Uh, tools like keras and tensorflow and it is this is the only uh, you know backend algorithm in anif that can that is compatible to successive learning so for example today i am training with 10000 document and when the system is online that means it is actually a production system still i can tra train it the next day in another 10000 next to next day another 10000 so this is called online learning or successive learning this is possible only with the neural network Work model. This is the most advanced model. So, uh, as I said, that ensemble is uh, possibly the most powerful, and it gives you an orchestra effort. Because suppose uh, this violin player is doing something wrong, so this uh, you know sitar player can uh, you know um, make it up. So uh, we all are working uh, as a team uh, to produce better. That is the motto of the ensemble model. and that's why it is actually matching both lexical and associative to get the good of the both world now here you can see that uh, this is the training model structure of a training model you see this is the 
title of the book ESR spectroscopy for life science application and introduction follows by a pipe sign um, the summary of the book and then all the library of congress subject heading allotted by the trained library professionals uh, in, in the downloaded mock record and we replace the keyword with the uri because uri is the uh, uh, representing the concept term is not permanent today it is chairman uh, yesterday it was chairman today it is chairperson so term always changes but the concept never changes the concept of chairman and chairperson is the same head of a group so that remains same and the uri is representing the concept so nowadays it is in machine learning it is mandatory to use uri in place of the term so as i said the library of congress is entirely linked to open data so every concept is represented uh, through uri okay so now you see this is the database so 6 lakhs of records we have created in this fashion so this is one set you can see uh, let me show so this is one set so column one includes all the text data title and summary note and column two includes all the subject heading against that book given by the trained library professionals so in this way we prepared our trained data and now let me show you something live then i will be coming to the possibilities what we are trying and what how it is available so, um, okay, uh, let me open up another uh, terminal. And this is the tool we are utilizing. You can see on if uh, wiki. So, this is the um, I, mean, I don't know the meaning of the term, but you can see here. Um, this is prepared by National Library of Finland and they opened up this framework through uh, GitHub. So this is one of the project. National Library of Finland, you all know, uh, they are famous for their uh, use of open source. Koha, entire Finland is using Koha. Entire Finland is using Viewfind. Viewfind, uh, National Library of Finland is a very important stakeholder. Cosmos they have created, uh, Anip they have created. So this is uh, one of the project. And it's an open source uh, tool based Python. So you can download, you can install by seeing the manual. Installation is very easy. But the real tough thing is that uh, uh, data curation. So now let me start my ANIF. You can see my uh, terminal now. Terminal is visible. CD ANIF. So uh, can, you, can you see the terminal? I have entered inside any virtual environment, any VNB, yeah, fine. So uh, now you see, uh, you can, if I give this command, any if uh, list projects, so all the projects we have created, every, every, you know, project is actually, um, you are using a different vocabulary, different training data set, and you are testing and attempting. So this is one thing is called uh, project. So you can see we have tested with Agrohook, Mace, and then Library of Congress subject heading list, and DDC plus LCSH both. So let me show you first. Uh, you see these are the backend we have attempted in LCSH, uh, TFITF, MLLM, Omikusi. Omikuchi both variant and neural network. So this is the best model, as I said. So let me show you that whether it can do uh, my job. And I can test in common pump. I can also run ANIP as a server. So both I am going to show you. So here, suppose uh, to avoid again uh, this one, avoid typing what I have copied something here so uh, let me explain this command I am echoing that means echo this text which includes the title of the um, document challenges and issues in Indian fiscal system so somehow this book is related to economics and this is the uh, this is the uh, 
summary note of that particular book that how many sections are there which section deals with what mainly it is deals with dealing with the fiscal democratization decentralization etc uh, etc et so it's a book on economics mainly in broader sense then suppose i want to know what is the what should be the lcsh hyphen n n dot n so this is my project name yeah. so let me check whether i am doing the right thing so i am asking anip that you please suggest uh, sorry that you please suggest me uh, let me check the uh, take the project name lcsh n n ensemble en okay fine so i am copying this one so this is the details of the text i have already stored for demonstration purposes i am pasting it now and i am changing taking first the uh, this project lcsh hyphen lcsh hyphen nn neural network then ensemble then it's an english language project so this is the project name i have give i have given any name you can give so what it will do now uh, just for testing purposes uh, what we do after uh, developing the model i can test it uh, in a common prompt so i am throwing a particular unknown text uh, data to the machine through a particular project this project is based on neural network model and it will uh, load because you know neural network means it is a combination of omikuzi and many more so it takes normally a bit time for the first time uh, it is is now reading the text and predicting the lcsh based subject reading a few second it will take initially because you say it's a heavy model uh, based on uh, omikuzi and so on and now you see after this it can tell me that um, it is basically you can give this particular keyword from lc finance public and this is the accuracy score higher the accuracy score more uh, pertinent is the uh, you know, uh, keyword or concept development economics and every time it is linked with lcsh uri so i want uh, what is development economics i can open a link to check library of congress that uh, what is development economics so from lcsh this is the beauty of the uri because i am using uri so every you know concept is now connected so development economics what is the related term what is the <clears throat> closely matching term possible lc classification for this everything it will show and uh, now i want to do same thing from um, graphics can now start my anip server so anip can run and i can open up the server so it's a, it, this is called a us wsyg uh, service so now i can select okay i am interested in lcsh neural network model and now this time let me give something else say this is the book you let me i show you what is the book i don't know say i am <coughs> pasting so this is the title generic data analysis for plant and animal breeding mostly biotechnology and this is the uh, summary note and now i am selecting a project lcsh and getting suggestion so here you do not do not have to remember the commands you can also um, you know work in the web interface and it is also supportive to uh, rest api call that i am going to show you in open define i can Uh, extract data uh, for a set of documents
so as i said first time when you are um, adding a model it takes time and second time it will be lightning speed so i'm copying another book to show you that it works in lightning speed say suppose this book i am selecting okay so say that this book is on uh, plant biotechnology that is the highest agricultural plant genetics all are coming from this library of congress so now let me uh, try with another book and this time you see it will be lightning speed so this book is based on the lgbtq youth well being and social media application use and by lgbtq youth and so on so let me see what uh, it's not quite pertinent you see because library of congress is a generic model but the moment i switch over to another uh, you know domain specific vocabulary like homo sorus you see the result will be much more appropriate so that is one of the finding of our research that uh, the generic tool we use like ddc and um, library of congress subject heading are not quite gender neutral they are biased towards the mainstream gender like gender as a binary male or female so beyond that they uh, do not include anything so that's why domain specific model you see now uh, domain specific uh, thesaurus like homo sorus or the one we are actually translating so that is quite you know pertinent social media lgbtq plus social media lgbtq youth and so on so <clears throat> these are the thing and another uh, you know important thing is that uh you can see it can also classify so in the in case of past i have shown you that uh, it is providing me lcsh so we have created another model which includes both ddc and lcsh so um, suppose here also i am using say i am using omikuzi here ddc plus lcsh omikuzi bonsai project so if i give that particular data again so this time you will see it will not only give you the library of congress subject heading but also give you the ddc class number so it is saying that the most appropriate one is biotechnology with the class number 660.6 and followed by other then if i switch over to um, neural network let me see what it says so again uh, on the basis of neural network you see result will be slightly different and as it is more perfect this neural network model so first time when you are uploading a model it takes time particularly neural network model because these are large models and i'm using laptop only but it's a very powerful laptop with 32 uh, 2 gb ram i7 processor but still neural network is huge so now it is going to predict not only first time you see it uh, this lcsh and predict a uh, subject heading from lc and now we can predict uh, both uh, you know you see neural network model is more accurate it is also saying biotechnology as a first second option it is getting you can also use plant biotechnology along with the main class of ddc so uh, it can do magic for us uh, and uh, <clears throat> the last thing what i am going to show you that one by one it is not possible so we are also currently checking whether it can uh, do the same thing uh, for uh, rest api so once it is uh, we, we, this is uh, working quite nicely so uh, again i am going to the uh, prompt of bnb prompt and this time i am asking uh, you know that uh, uh, that you give me data in uh, you know uh, json format as a rest api call so i am making a rest api call and this is the uh, url so i need to start anif run also i need to start anip server any number of uh, anip i can run 
so i am starting the server okay now from this server if i command that you give me data in json format you see by using this uh, url where anip is working then this particular project lcsh nn ensemble it can suggest me but this time data will be coming in json format so the thing is that i can throw through open define a lot of data it can fetch data automatically then i can check how many of these are matching how many of these are not matching what is the score and so on now you see the data it will provide a data but in a different style so it is now going through this particular document economics for environmental studies and it will give me data in json format and the moment i am getting it json format i can convert to any other format so possibilities are en en enormous you see result it is giving level environmental economic score because i actually given that you give me maximum five result for which threshold values are more than 0.4 so that i i, I can also uh, instruct that how many uh, uh, keywords i need and what should be the threshold value to determine the keyword so if it is going more than 0.4 it is giving environmental economics microeconomics macroeconomics related to this book so it is quite possible uh, and many thing we are actually trying here so if i again go back uh, uh, to tell you that what are the possibilities so this i already explained that how anip is uh, supporting the rest api so we are right we can write a python script like this i can throw a text here and collect data from backend ani in this json format and that particular json format later on can be converted into subject keywords so it's very fast we check that it can index 10 documents per second can you believe it 10 documents it can index per second and this is the result we have thrown text and it is giving me data in this fashion and we can check that this is against this particular corpus what model is giving what result and you can see that neural network always very close to human model so this is actually done by the human uh, you know uh, library uh, there we checked what in uh, neural network omicuzi and tfid is performing so we always found that neural network is more close to a human indexing system and provide us a better result and large scale we can do and what is the possibility what presently we are trying just you imagine your uh, catalog interface uh, for example here we have taken uh, snapshot from koha so this is the title and uh, this is the uh, 520 summary note we have added my our uh, you know present attempt is that as it is working in rest api and in different things to integrate it with uh, koha and dispatch so i will add uh, title and uh, summary note here and when i will go or move to 650 subject identity it can predict me the subject on the basis of the input i have given so i have given input of this book this uh, summary note for this book and by reading this it can predict that okay this may be a keyword uh, and it will be sorted by accuracy score i can click it it will come here so that kind of system we are trying to develop so thank you very much and the same thing can be uh, done with a uh, dispatch for dc subject metadata so that's all from my end thank you very much for your patience hearing and i am now closing sharing and uh, now you can ask me a few question if you want the participants are requested to please put your questions in chat box or your you may raise also hand digital hand we will take it will allow hola hola Me, no. now there is no question in chat box sir okay okay then uh, see you later bye thank you
Okay, okay. I'm leaving then. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you, sir. So now this is, this was the last last session of today. So, huh? Now we have to again reassemble tomorrow at 10 30. The session will be taken by Professor Arup Bakshi. He will be talking on open source research and data analysis analytics tool. So you are requested to be on time at 10 30. Oh, sorry, 10 30. 10 30 speaker will be sorry. The Sanjay Kataria. 10 Alki Kuntarik, Baistrik. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the session will be taken by Dr. Akas Singh. Sorry. The theme, uh, the topic will be on open access policy and compliances, that is, copyright and licensing, etc. Dr. Akas Singh is assistant librarian and national from the National Law University. He will be taking session tomorrow. So be joined on the time. Thank you for today.